I'm Josh. I'm a developer relations engineer at Truera. In this webinar, I'll show you how to evaluate and track LLM experiments and build better LLM apps with TrueLens. Let's get started. There's been a huge upswell in developers joining the generative AI revolution. This movement has built amazing applications like question answering chatbots that have read all of our company's data and code co-pilots that accelerate our ability to quickly develop new applications. These applications are built by composing models like GPT-4, Llama 2, Claude, and Orca, to name a few, vector stores like Weebia, Pinecone, or Milvus, and links to the real world, including re real-time retrieval from APIs and taking action in the real world to book flights, order groceries, and more. We stitch these applications together using frameworks like Langchain and Llama Index, and often create in creative ways, such as using query planning. The power of these apps is truly amazing, but we should consider these applications hallucinatory until we prove otherwise. Why is that? Decades of research has optimized models for generalization while penalizing memorization. So finding the sweet, sweet spot where models can generate factual information can be really sketchy. Let me give you an example. Here, I've asked Claude to who are the founders of Truera. The model responds with one correct founder on a POM data, along with two others that did not found the company, Somesh and Tomer. In addition, the model states that we were acquired by SAS in 2019. I promise that's not the case. This result is likely of the information, a result of the information's sparse presence in the training data. There was enough information for the model put, to put together a plausible sounding answer, but not enough to memorize the right answer. Alternatively, when I ask the question, who are the founders of Google, the model is able to successfully respond with Larry Page and Sergey Brin, along with the founding story. Here, the model has seen the story enough times where it's able to memorize it. In other words, the model was able to avoid hallucination. Like I said before, the overlap between generalizations and memorization can be really murky. LLMs are trained to generalize. They sometimes happen to memorize as a side effect. Said another way, they sometimes happen to halluc not hallucinate as a side effect. But how do we go forward from here? We should out allow LLMs to focus on general tasks, tasks like summarization, embedding generation, inference, and planning. And we should leave the memorization to something else. Vector stores are a great way to provide our applications with a memory letting the models do what they're best at. In doing so, a lot of us have turned to racks or retrieval augmented question answering as a solution to the hallucination problem. In this structure, once a question is asked to the application, we can create its embedding. Then we can search the vector database to find the most similar documents to our query and provide them to our LLM. Last, the model itself can take that context and form a complete answer back to the user. But rags are not a silver bullet. Here, we built a simple rag QA on top of our website and docs. Then we asked it, who is Shayak? Shayak being one of our founders. The application responded with a mostly correct answer, including this time in CM CMU. But it also hallucinated this detail about being a member of the Bank of England AI Public Private Forum and OECD Global Partnership on AI. Instead, this is referring to another member of our team named Shamik. This likely occurred because of how they, each name was tokenized and stored in the vector database. Shayak was broken up into the terms Sha and Yak, and Shamik into Sha and Meek. Shamik's background was then stored in a similar, similar place in the vector store to Shayak's, and both were retrieved by our application. So how do we go about testing that our rags are not hallucination free? We can attack this problem with what we call the rag triad. In the first leg of the triad, we can check the context relevance to make sure we are retrieving context that will be useful to answer our query. Next, we can check to ensure that our final response is fully supported by evidence from that context. And last, we need to check our final app's response 
is relevant to the original user's query. But getting this right takes a lot of experimentation. Today, this often means building an initial version, doing a vibe check on a few runs of the app, and iterating with different prompts, parameters, models. But there's a huge gap in the dev tooling. We need to attract these experiments. That's why we built TrueLens to fill this gap. Once you've built your LLM application, you can connect it to TrueLens and start logging records. Then you can add feedback functions to perform evaluations on each time your application runs. Here we can test against inputs, outputs, and key metadata, along with internal uh, context retrieved um, and different parts of the app. Then we can use our Streamlit dashboard to explore records and evaluation results alongside key metrics like cost and latency. Last, you can iterate and select the optimal application configuration or version for your application. A feedback function provides a score after reviewing an LLM app's inputs, outputs, intermediate results, and metadata. This includes evaluations that we discussed in the non-hallucinatory triad, but also evals like sentiment, language matching, and toxicity. And these are easy to implement. We've implemented a number of these out of the box where you all, all you need to do is simply call the feedback class, include the model provider and feedback function you'd like to use, and add, or add a pointer to the text you'd like to run your evaluation on. It's also an extensible framework where you can build custom evaluations specific to your application's requirements. Let's go through some of the examples of how to use feedback functions in practice. As we showed before, our LLM app responded mostly in the correct way to this question about Shyak. But it also added on this additional detail about Shmeek. When we examine the context retrieved by the application, we see two chunks about Shyak, but as we suspected, two additional chunks about Shmeek, shown in red. TrueLens is able to evaluate this context and score these chunks low, resulting in a poor context relevance score. But hallucinations aren't even always wrong. Here we created a rag using some Wikipedia pages. Asking about dental floss brands yielded correct answers like Oral-B and Colgate. Only problem was these brands aren't listed anywhere in the context. With no evidence that supports the app's response, this evaluation leads to a low groundedness score. Even we, when we satisfy context relevance and groundedness, we can still go astray. Here, we're still using our Wikipedia rag and ask the year that Hawaii's state song was written. But instead of responding with a year, the app just responded with the name of the song. Clearly, this is not the performance we're looking for and results in a low QA relevant score. So far, we've made a lot of progress. We've moved a lot of the memorization requirements of our app out of the hands of the LLM and to, and to a vector store to serve as our memory. Meanwhile, we can let the model perform the task that it's best at. But when these tasks get more complicated, are there ways we can still meet the challenge? Query planning is one such way. By allowing the LLM to take a first step to plan the retrievals needed, we can answer more complex questions. Query planning allows us to break complex questions into its component sub-questions. This can be especially useful when we need to compare text from di different documents or different parts of the knowledge base. And after doing retrieval for each sub-question, we can feed in our improved context to the LLM. Providing the LLM with more complete context give it the, give it, gives it the ability to decide how much context it needs and why. Let's see this in action. In this example, I've created a RAG QA on the text of Alice in Wonderland. To test the application, I pulled in questions from a study guide and asked it to compare the sentiment of Moose's long tail, the mock turtle story, and the lobster quadrille. By using query planning, our application was able to break down the question into separate parts to retrieve the text around each of the three stories. And then it can bring them into the LLM for inference. It's important to note here that while there's a trend, tremendous benefit here in terms of response quality, 
it comes at the cost of higher latency and token usage. And you can see this in the timeline displayed by TrueLens, where we see each component and this, just one query using this method took around 30 seconds. As you iterate through configurations and compare query planning strategies, TrueLens can be especially useful in tracking the results of these experiments. Tracking the evaluations alongside cost and latency lets us easily compare different app versions and select the best one. Last, we can do a deep dive on building a RAG QA app on the canonical LLM stack. So in this example, we're going to build a RAG QA application on top of a Pinecone database and use TrueLens for evaluation. Here, we're going to download a pre-embedding data set from Pinecone datasets. This allows us to skip the embedding and pre-processing steps in this walkthrough. Once we've downloaded the data, we can create our index using Pinecone, just needing to initialize the vector store using our API key and setting our environment. Then we can create the index, selecting our metric and the dimension we need for the vector store. In this case, we should select the dimension to be the dimension of text embedding idea two, which is the embedding that was used in the data set. Once it's initialized, we can upturn the documents into our database. And after we've done so, we can see a total vector count of 30,000 in our vector store. This gives us a signal that we successfully were able to upsert the documents into the into Pinecone. Now comes the fun part. So here we can uh, set up our embeddings using LangChain, and then set our vector store to be the Pinecone vector store for our application that we just created. Onto creating our retrieval augmented generation app, we can set up our LLM with a model name and temperature. And then we can chain together the different components of our app, including our model and our retriever and our vector store. Now that we've set our application, let's set up our evaluations with TrueLens. Here we'll create three evaluation metrics, groundedness, context relevance, and QS relevance. Groundedness is gonna serve us the ability to evaluate when, if the response is fully supported by the context provided by the retriever. Question answer relevance is gonna give us the ability to evaluate if the answer provided at the end is relevant to the final, to the original question. And last, context relevance gives us the ability to evaluate if the context that's being retrieved is relevant to the original question. This is the same evaluations we saw in the original RAG triad. Once we've set these up, we can just pass them as a list into our application with TrueChain. TrueChain is the, is the LangChain deep integration that TrueLens has. Once we've done so, we can operate the app as normal, passing in prompts and getting responses. And importantly, these will now show up in dashboard. If we go over to the TrueLens dashboard, we can see the first five runs of our application, along with the evaluation scores for context relevance, groundedness, and question answer relevance here. We can also see alongside the latency and cost. Here you can see we're really struggling in both context relevance and groundedness for this application. And we should continue to iterate to improve this, improve the app. Now moving on to what turned out to be the best version of this application, I'll skip forward to the fifth iteration. So here you can see the key change we're making in the app is setting our retriever to only re retrieve the top K equals one. So only retrieve the most relevant document to pass to our LLM. This is, allows our LLM to not be distracted by irrelevant context, such as uh, information about Shamik. For example, last, we'll set up our same evaluations, create our app, and then run the same five queries that we've been running. When we go over to the leaderboard, you can see 
our improved scores on all three metrics, uh, QS relevance and groundedness in particular, along with the same latency and cost that we had originally. Now we've achieved the optimal version of our application. So when we built our vector database, we have we had a ton of configurations to choose from. We need to choose high quality yet diverse data like we learned from when we read the Lima paper. We need to choose a chunk size and chunk overlap. We need to select the distance metric for our index and choose our embedding model. When we set up the retrieval, we need to choose our top K to de determine how much context the app should retrieve. And we need to determine if we want our app to do direct retrieval or use some kind of query planning strategy. And last, we need to choose from a massive list of open source and proprietary LLMs, choose parameters like temperature and frequency penal penalty, and break our, out our inner prompt engineer and craft that perfect prompt template that you keep seeing LinkedIn posts about. This is a ton to keep track of, and I wish you luck if you want to keep track of all these configurations in something like Google Sheets. Open source DrillMs gives you all the tools you need to track the quality of your app across all of these different configurations, compare runs, and select your best performing app. Come find us on GitHub. Thank you.